this is Larry Berman. I am producing these videos that are a precursor to the book that I am writing. You're actually on the ground floor of hearing about me producing these videos, uh, or producing this book, I should say. The name of the book is called Prayer, Why Is It So Difficult and How to Overcome It? In fact, the proposed cover is this right here. Um, that's me. That's my retirement photo from the U.S. Coast Guard. There's my shadow box in the background. Um, and this book is, uh, it's, it's, uh, 50% done, I would guess, estimate. And there's a lot more that's not been even been printed that goes into here. And so, um, this is the fifth video in the series, um, which I plan on doing this for as long as the Lord has me. It, it, in fact, I plan on doing this for a long, long time. Right now, you are in the foundational stages where my book is 50% completed, and you're going to get updates from me. And also, the whole purpose of what I'm trying to do is to reconcile people back to the Father, back to the Father, and in, in you, Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Prayer, why is it so difficult and how to overcome it? I've got 45 years experience as a Christian. I came from Judaism to Christianity, and God has called me uh, and my fiance Alice, Alice Harvey, we get married in January, to do book tours and speaking engagements and talk to people about prayer. So there'll be more about that. There's, there has been more about that in the last four other videos. But what I want to do today is I want to give you my second of my devotionals. I think two previous videos, in video number three, uh, I gave my devotional about uh, Exodus 33, 11. In fact, I talked about Exodus 33 and Exodus 34, which are my two favorite chapters uh, in the book, in the Bible. But today I actually want to do something from the New Testament. I actually am doing my devotional on Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 29. All right. So the scripture verse that I'm doing the devotional in is called "Come to me, all the all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me, upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and I will and you will find rest for your souls." By the way, you may see that this is not a highly polished professional. Uh, presentation. I'm just trying to be real. I'm just a real human being without producers and people who polish this. I'm, I just want to be a real person like you're a real person. And so there's no editing. It is what it is on this, on these things here. But let's go on. One of the things that happened last night, by the way, um, Alice and I, we do Sabbath candles and we celebrate Sabbath, because I really believe that it's a way of honoring God, and it's a way of honoring our body. Jesus says, man was not made for the Sabbath, but the Sabbath was made for man, which means that we need it. It's something we need, and it's underrated. People don't, I'm going to get back to the scripture verse in a minute, but talking about rest, the Lord has showed that if you ignore his rest then you're not going to have his rest and so those who actually take the time cut a day out it's like a tithe but instead of giving 10 percent of your money you're giving a seventh of your week and it's such a, so important that it's it's a it's a bigger percentage yes I know the tithe is a tenth. It would seem like a bigger percentage, but a seventh is actually, you only have seven days. You're cutting out an entire day, not just writing a check. So it's actually a bigger percentage. It's more important. It's part of the Ten Commandments. Writing, uh, and I know as Christians, we've been set free from, you know, the commandments. Yeah, okay, I understand that. But there is something that is forever with keeping the Sabbath. 
one of the things that I've learned is if you don't keep the Sabbath, you're not going to get the kind of rest that he wants you to have. And so in the devotional, you know, we talked about, come to me, all you that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I believe the Sabbath is a part of that. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and I will give, give you rest for your souls. Okay, and then this is what I wrote in the book. The God who created the entire universe with all of its galaxies, rocks, gases, plants, animals, and living beings sends each one and every one of us a personal invite to come to him and he will give you rest. Recall someone who dominates the room they enter into and take over all the conversations. One wants to get away from that person because they seem to suck all the air out of the room. Not so with the Creator. His very presence radiates peace, rest, and answers. The peace, that peace is, however, con conditional. Combative people rarely ever find peace, but those who know how to serve or how to receive peace find a plethora source of peace in His presence. That is why I sit with the Lord in my prayer room, quiet, with a candle burning. He never gets riled up from his day, but we sure do. We sure do get riled up about our day. He knows the big picture because he has already written it. In fact, he's seen the, the end from the beginning. Give your stressors to the master creator and he is happy to sit with you to help you organize your anxiety into small, manageable puzzle pieces. And he will direct you where to put each piece as a loving father helps a young, adorable child. You are ador adorable to him. So the purpose of this particular segment is to talk about peace. There is not a lot of peace out there. Everybody seems riled up and everybody seems to want to complain. And if you're the one who's just total in peace and you talk soberly, you talk sanely, you talk intelligently, they're going to know you've got a secret. What's the secret to your peace? And they'll ask you what that is. So one of the things that makes it very frustrating in prayer is you have to sit quietly alone with the Lord. And you know he's very quiet. So when you go talk alone with the Lord and you are full of anxiety, it's rough, it's difficult. One of the reasons I believe that God is very, very quiet is because he wants to let you know that he has peace, that he is quiet and listening. I believe that when you go to take time and spend time alone with the Lord, He knows it. And I believe that He puts angels around you at that time because He wants, He longs for your, your prayers. He is your master healer. He is your savior. He wants to hear your prayers. And so when it seems real, real quiet, and you can hear crickets and it's like, all right, God, are you listening? Baby, I'm telling you, he is being quiet. It's in his very nature to listen to your prayers, to listen to our prayers. So go ahead and just tell him everything that you want to tell him. Get it off your chest. You're creating dialogue. Now, yes, it's true. You may not hear him answer you back. But don't you understand the Lord's nature? You're pouring your heart out to him. He immediately starts to work on what your answers are. Yes, I know it's frustrating because you're dealing with the supernatural. You are finite. You're dealing with the infinite. You are visible. You're dealing with the invisible. You are linear. He is beyond time and math. And so it is a difficult, different world. But he will show you that he's real. He will show you he's 
so many miracles, man. When you get when you tap into the place where you're talking to him regularly and he's talking to you, man, you're gonna see that he's gonna open up doors for you, amazing doors. So, anyways, I just so that's what this segment is. Segment five is about Matthew chapter eleven, verses twenty-eight through twenty-nine, talking about God's rest. Get whatever you need off your chest. Observe the Sabbath and trust God that he's going to take care of you. Thank you for watching this video. I also have a Facebook page by the same name, Prayer Why Is It So Difficult and How to Overcome It. Again, I am Larry Berman, and I'm going to be doing this every day. I'm not sure yet. I haven't decided if I'm going to broadcast this on the Sabbath. I may not. But Shalom. Thank you.